Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we are on day, what day is it? 11 of the advent of cyber. So today we are actually doing hacking Wi-Fi. Um, one thing that's funny about this, this box specifically is I did a video on this exact technique probably three years ago and this hasn't changed in the slightest, still hasn't changed. It's been around a lot longer than that. So it's one of those things that's kind of interesting that Wi-Fi really hasn't progressed that much. And yes, I know there is more security, but I'm talking about the general populace. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's get into it. So first thing is this one actually requires you to SSH into some machines um, or into a machine twice. Excuse me. And you can see here's the username and the password. It's glitch and passwords three, two, one. Your IP will obviously change. So you'll need that information. So. What is Wi-Fi? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to read this to you because if you don't know what Wi-Fi is, you're probably at the wrong video. No offense. Uh, I doubt you're trying to learn how to hack Wi-Fi if you're just learning what Wi-Fi is for the first time. So the first thing is what we need to do is find the SSID or what is being broadcasted, right? Then we need to know the PSK, which is pre-shared key. So these are just, um, these are Basically, there are definitions that we need to know in order to pursue the attack because that's how they're going to reference them in the future. Um, abbreviations was the word I was looking for there. Um, so now Wi-Fi's pivotal role in organizations. Now, this is true in some cases. Wi-Fi is very pivotal, pivotal for a lot of um, companies because especially nowadays, people come and go a lot more than they used to. So the days of just kind of you come in the office, your desktop sitting there, you sit at your desk and you work really isn't how people operate anymore. And so we have to change with the times and um, Wi-Fi is a pivotal piece of that, right? So now the attacks on Wi-Fi, there's multiple attacks on Wi-Fi. This is one of the reasons why you hear all the time, like, Hey, don't, don't connect to public Wi-Fi. Don't connect to public Wi-Fi. The reality is um, public Wi-Fi is, is not it's not the fact that it's public that's that's super dangerous it's that you don't know what you're connecting to that's really what's more dangerous but here's some of the attacks that can happen right the evil twin attack is what i was talking about create a fake access point so for instance you go to mcdonald's you connect to mcdonald's free wi-fi and you think that you're connected to mcdonald's wi-fi the reality is anybody could have a system there that looks like mcdonald's wi-fi and you connect to it and you're doing whatever and you think that hey everything https is encrypted well that's true unless they're putting themselves in the middle right um so there's all kinds of ways that you can you can do this um so evil twin attack is literally just pretending to be the the wi-fi or hotspot that you're talking about rogue access point this attack's objective is similar similar to the evil twin attack, right? The attacker sets up an open Wi-Fi access point, exactly like I said, make it available with users with good signal strength. The users inside the organization may accidentally join the network if their device are set to connect to automatically open the Wi-Fi. Okay, so you notice the difference here is one of them is going to be like home internet or free internet. They're trying to get you to connect to it, but the rogue access point is more tailored. It's I'm going to sit outside your business. So the example I used was McDonald's. That's a public area, right? It's not a tailored attack. A rogue access point would be, hey, I'm going to, you're, you work for Facebook or Meta or whatever, and I'm going to then put a Wi-Fi hotspot next to Meta that says Meta whatever, right? And I've seen, and you can even do it where it says like Meta's work, you can mimic theirs and then make any password accepted on there. So that way they think they're actually authenticating and they're actually not. It's any password will let them in. They don't know that. Then you have WPS attack. I'm not even going to talk about that because I don't know anyone that's still using WPS. But if you are, stop. Now, WPA and WPA2 cracking, that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to go through it. But basically, this is very similar to um, password cracking. Once you get the pa or the ha uh, the pre-shared key, the, the hash that you need. So you can see here, once you get this handshake completed, if you capture it, you can crack it. Um, so what you're doing, you have right here, our device in monitor mode. It's listening. That's pretty much it. Then you have the router, right? The hotspot, the connection, the access point, whatever you want to call it. And then you have this, this is a device that is already connected to the device or to the Wi-Fi. So you have your phone, you're sitting at your house. It's already connected to your Wi-Fi. This is what it'd look like. You would be over here listening. You would send a de-authentication right here in the middle to say, Hey, disconnect it would disconnect and then instantly reconnect. Well, when it does that instant reconnect, you capture, you capture that connection and you see it 
and now you have that pre-shared handshake because you captured it as it happened, right? Technically, you could do this without um, without deauthing if you just waited till somebody came home and connected to it, right? But the chance, but the problem is you're going to get one shot. Here, you're going to see they do tell or they do um, the deauth with one deauth packet. I will tell you, I don't think I've ever gotten it to do it on one deauth packet, so we'll see. But so now you have the four-way handshake. We just talked about that. The router sends the challenge. The client responds with the encrypted information. The router verifies and sends confirmation, kind of like the TCP handshake, right? Then they have the final checking connection. So that is what we're taking advantage of right there is because we can deauth and then receive that challenge because we're just listening, right? Wi-Fi is in the air. You can't see it, but it's there. Now, the vulnerability lies in the fact that an attacker can capture the four-way handshake. Exactly. If they're listening, when the device connects, when the handshake data, they can use it as a basis to attempt brute forcing or dictionary attacks, right? So here's the practical. I'm not going to do this first part because they're just using a different way to show you how to do something that they're going to do next. So you have the IW dev, which you can see here shows the interface WLAN 2. So if we go, here's our box. We have two of them. They're both connected to the same thing. You can see glitch at Wi-Fi. If you guys are wondering how to SSH in, you just type SSH glitch at whatever the IP address is. There you go. You're connected to the Wi-Fi or to the uh, machine that's going to have the Wi-Fi. So we just say IW dev, right? If I could type. And if you look, I, don't, I haven't looked yet. I don't know if this is the exact same, but if you look, they have an interface too. We have the same thing. So WLAN2 is the name of the interface that we're going to take advantage of here. That's important, right? So, or when I say take advantage, I mean we're going to use. I shouldn't say take advantage. So then you can see here they could put it in scanning mode. And what that's going to do is if you say sudo dev, if I can type, here we go, sudo IW, and then you can see you can put it in scan mode, IW dev WLAN2. WLAN 2, which is our interface, it's the only interface, so we're not going to miss out. And you say scan, it can actually scan for um, Wi Fi connections. There might be 10, there might be two, right? Depends on where you are, where you live, that type of thing. You can see here, they only have one, and it's bot time. Um, Let's see, that's, that's the amount of time. There it is, malware MAP. So, Mayor Malware access point right? So who's our target? Typically in these, it's Mayor Malware. So right away, pretty sure that's the one they're looking for. And there's only one. So you can see also they're giving you the CCMP, which is the um, cipher chain block or cipher blockchain um, en encryption. So you can see right here, uh, they break it down counter mode with cipher blockchaining. Yep. So that is part of WPA2. So you can kind of deduce just from this that it's WPA, WPA2, which is both, they're not the same encryption algorithms or anything like that, but they are the same as far as what we're trying to do here. So you can see you gain a little bit of information about the BSSID, but we don't really need to do that. And you're going to see why. So first thing is you can see here, now will be a good time to discuss another type we can use monitor mode if you guys have never had a access point and put it in monitor mode it's the only way you're really going to do any serious wi-fi um, cracking so get an access point that can be put into monitor mode because it's used for this purpose right not just cracking but also auditing and things like that so you can see we're going to say sudo ip link set dev wlan2 down so you had to take the, the um, device down or the interface down and the reason you have to take it down, simple. You're going to change what it's what mode it's in, which is monitor mode. So we say, there we go. We took it down. Now you're going to say, hey, we want to put it in monitor mode. And keep in mind, when you're in monitor mode, if you're doing this, trying to test something at home or something like that, if you're in monitor mode, you cannot connect to Wi-Fi. So keep that in mind. All right. And then now we take it back up. So we're putting it into monitor mode. And then we're then we're putting it back up. All right, so now it should be back up. So now we just do the same thing. We say info. We want to make sure it's up. It's up and it's in monitor mode. So now what this means is it can just monitor, it can audit, it can listen for everything. It's not going to connect to Wi-Fi. It's going to listen for Wi-Fi. And this is huge. This is very important. 
if you don't have some um, adapters cannot be in monitor mode so make sure if you're at home trying this one this is extremely illegal if you're doing it on something you don't own two make sure you're just doing this testing where you have permission and then also make sure you have a actual adapter that can go into monitor mode because if it can't you're just kind of dead in the water so they're showing you how to ssh in and they're telling you you should keep them separate like we did so now here's where the fun begins so you're going to type sudo air dump this is part of the air crack suite and what you're going to do is you're going to say sudo air dump so what we're going to do is we're dumping everything that wlan2 is listening for you notice it's going through all the channels it's listening for everything well we can see there's only one thing it's going to find we saw that it, there's only one wi-fi in the area so we know that right so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and use the same thing air dump now in this case you don't have to do this but first thing we're going to do is stop it but we're going to say sudo air dump channel six because if you notice this is on channel six right the bssid we put it there and then we say hey we want the output file to be here the reason we do this is because you need an output file because you have to capture the packets you need to know the channel because otherwise if you have 10 wi-fi's around you you're going to be capturing all 10 of them you and you need it to stay on one channel and listen not sit there and cycle through the channels so we hit this and now you notice it's only listening on this and you notice it's hit, it, there's all these beacons well that's good so here's the bssid here's the different things but you notice there's no station that station would be something connecting to it right maybe it's a, a phone or something like that we need something to connect to it because we need something to de-authenticate off of it right so now we go through and you can see they have a station now it says it could take one to five minutes before receiving the client information okay well there it is we got pretty lucky that that timing actually worked out perfect so here's our station here's our bssid so now we know what we're going to de-authenticate. Keep in mind, if there's multiple stations, typically you want to try and get one that is has a good connection, and you also want one that's sending a lot of information because you'll connect faster, right? Um, if you have one that's just barely on the cusp, it may struggle to reconnect, and you may struggle to get um, the connection. So now we have to actually de-authenticate it, right? So one thing to keep in mind is because we have that out file, right? you have to keep the second terminal open. So I'll show you what I mean. So over here, this is writing to a file. We need that file because it's saving the information. So we need to go over here and say air replay ng, right? Which is part of the um, aircrack ng suite. And the attack zero is the attack mode. So this breaks it down for you right here. Where is it? There it is. It's the deauthentication attack, right? That's what we want. We want to deauthenticate. And then one is the value of, of deauths to send. Now, this is where I say you're going to typically not get, you might get it on one, but it's going to be rare that you just go deauth, boom, got it, right? You might have to deauth for a bit. Um, I've seen it where you have. So now you hit enter and you can see sending the direction, da, da, all that crap. Okay, sending 64 directed deauth code, all that. There's the, the handshake, right? So it captured that handshake coming in. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it's got the handshake. We've captured it. Perfect. What's that mean? We can now crack it. So now with that cracking, we could take that WPA handshake and we can use air crack, right? Try not to get that space in there. Now, you notice we're going to use, make this bigger for you, maybe. All right, there we go. Okay, so now you notice we're gonna use air crack dash ng. So again, our tac ng, you can see that's the same suite of tools. The difference is we're using tac a2 versus before we use tac a0. And that is telling us what mode it is. And we're in WPA2 attack mode, right? There's the BSSID. Here is the um, word list that we're going to use, which is rock U. And then the output um, exclamation point cap, because that's the um, files that it's in, right? It's a cap file. We want all of them. So we go ahead and do that. You can see it runs. And very quickly, looks like it got it within 10 seconds. So fluffy champ 24. Okay. 
So key found, there's our key found. Now we have to answer some of these questions, but we found the keys, which then you just log into the Wi-Fi. Very easy, right? So here is the, we'll start backwards because we just co copied that. What is the P PSK, the pre-shared key? It's fluffy champ 24. What is the BSS ID of the wireless interface that's already connected? Well, that's right here. That is, if we could find it right here, that's the station, right? And you're probably not supposed to do it backwards, but who cares? And then what's the SSID, right? And BSSID, okay. Wait, do they want it backwards? What is the SSID and BSSID of the access point? Format, SSID, BSSID, okay. So format, the nice thing is they actually give it to us. Let's see if it will take it this way. They want a comma and they want it the other way, I think, but we'll go ahead and try and do it this way. Nope, they didn't want it that way. Okay, so, well, that's not even the SSID, I'm crazy. The SSID was may or malware. I had that backwards. Um, so where is, doo -doo -doo -doo, and we could go back on ours and do it, but it's easy because they actually give it to you here. I swear it showed us the mayor malware one. It's up here. Okay, there is mayor or malware M A P is the first part. And then the BSSID is right here. Tried to trick me on that one. Okay, now what's the BSS ID of, of our wireless interface? Well, if you go up, maybe, I'm stuck, there we go. If you go up to the top, and the BSS ID of our interface was, if I can find it here, well, there's Mayor Mauer AP, but that's, not our interface. There it is. And keep in mind, every interface will have a BSSID because it's important that you know it so that you can identify stations when they actually connect. So there you go. That was a fun one. I'm actually surprised they did this one because that's very hard to build that in a lab because it has to be connected to the internet the whole time, have a different um, interface, which is why they probably use the IW, not like IF config or something. Cause they didn't want you to find the other interfaces. Um, I would assume, but let's validate that real quick. So if we say IF config, IP config, okay. They just took it off. So, um, let's see. Yeah, they took, they took it out. So actually pretty smart on their part, but there is a, another interface that has to be on the machine, which is what they're, um, and you could do like netstat and stuff like that and figure it out, but it's not that important. So hopefully you guys like the box. Hopefully you guys learned something. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you did learn something, please tell me in the below what you learned. Cause I'm genuinely curious where, like what you guys learned from these, if you guys take anything away from these advents or if you just go, yeah, yeah. Another one. Cool. Thanks guys.